All right, welcome back. We continue live right here, Pittsburgh CW on the Sports Call, Bordis and Bordis Hotline. Give it a shout at 412 575 2600. While Pitt was in Clemson, there was the game of the night in the ACC. It's always a great game. North Carolina Duke. This was at Chapel Hill. It's interesting, Ron, because this was the 101st game all time between these two. The first 100 split down the middle wow. at 50 50, and the point differential was two points. I didn't That's know it. That. Uh, it's so competitive. I, I mean, it, it has to be the best rivalry in college basketball. You know, my favorite around here for years and years was Pitt UConn. I thought that was a lot of fun. But this just historically, year in and year out, uh, the great coaches, you know, from Dean Smith to Shashevsky now, Roy Williams. Uh, I mean, it's just been so much fun to watch. And I guess they play one more time. Now they'll play at Duke. They usually play right. the last Saturday before the uh, ACC tournament starts or the last weekend anyway. So uh, I'm sure we'll hear a lot more of those teams. North Carolina got the better of them today. They've been struggling. Yeah. Um, and uh, they got the better of Duke today. 82-78, your final score. And Mark DeStefano on Twitter says, Cam Johnson, 18 points and 13 rebounds. And he was a Pitt Panther who decided to transfer away. I think he's probably pretty happy he did about that. I, think I he would is. guess. Let's go to the lines. Line three we go. We got Rob in the Hill District. What's up, Rob? Hey, Bob. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, Miami released Lawrence Timmons so we can pick him up next year. Um, I'm, I, y'all, y'all always say Tomlin's one of the better coaches in the league, but you see these Pete Carroll's and these, uh, and these Bill Belichick's and all these other coaches, they have their assistants. They be getting head coaching jobs uh, in other places. And Mike Tomlin ain't never had none of his systems get. Uh, you know what? The, the one, I'll say this, though. I understand what you're saying, but the ones who've left Belichick have all failed, it seems to me. And that would include Charlie Weiss. That would include. Oh, there's been a lot. A of, lot of oh, them. Josh McDaniels. Uh, Josh McDaniels. Left McDaniels. Once and failed. How about what he did the other day at Indianapolis? That's so awful. It's terrible. He left you guys know, high and dry who left jobs to and join. Not him only that, he left the organization, made them look like fools. You know, you don't want a job. Okay, I get that. You don't have to take the job, but don't tell somebody you're going to take it. And then uh, renege on your word, and I see his agent just said, hey, I'm out of here. I'm not dealing with this guy anymore. I gave my word that he was going to take the job, and then he didn't. I thought it was really, really awful. That agent also represents the Indy Colts GM, Scott Ballard, or Chris Ballard, or whatever his name is. Ballard. A little interesting. Uh, so how about that? So, but here's the thing. Josh McDaniels will never get a head coaching job again in the NFL, in my opinion. Uh, maybe maybe, in, maybe uh, in New England. Maybe in New England. But you can't do that Belichick. either because you got to go through the Rooney rule and all the, the different layers, don't you? Yeah, but you hire the guy you want in the end. All right. Line four we go. It's Mark in the North Hills. Hey, Mark. What's up? Hey, guys. Great, uh, great show. Thanks. Um, my question is uh, a pit, and, uh, and they, I think they're in such a catch-22 with this uh, Stallings guy. On the one hand, <laughs> if they fire him, they owe him $9 million. But on the other hand, they're still going to have to wait with 2,500 people coming to the games uh, for two more years, I think, to get his players in here. I mean, how are they going to figure this out? I'll let you guys figure it out. It's, yeah. a, it's a real tough situation, man. I never thought it could get this bad, uh, but it is. And the point about nobody going to the games, nobody caring, the apathy uh, has set in. Uh, I'm, I'm a big believer you got to give a guy a chance. I mean, I, I would think a basketball coach needs four years, but uh, the way they're going, if they don't win a game and no one goes, it's going to be tough. It's going to be it tough, and, that, and, and who, who is going to take the job? It, it's not going to be a real attractive job out there. Scott Barnes left a mess, didn't he? The way he conducted business. I, I mean, honestly, uh, and here's the thing: um, it's not really Kevin Stallings' fault. It was just the way it, it's it is right now, and it's a redo. They got to start over. And like I said, you may want to get rid of Kevin Stallings. Go ahead, you bring in somebody else. I don't think it's going to change, yep. except for the fact that it's a new head coach, and so people will get excited about that. But maybe depending maybe. on who it is, they weren't right. very excited about when Stallings came here. That hire was greeted with more disdain and, and disappointment than I can ever remember a guy being hired. I think people really thought, really thought, and, and foolishly so, that Sean Miller would be interested in this job. Are you kidding me? Arizona's a 10 times better of a job than Pitt. His brother Archie wasn't going to leave Dayton for this. He ends up at Indiana. I think that's a little bit of a, a better job. So uh, I, I don't know who would take that job right now the way it is. We got Woody on uh, Twitter who says Foles' career is playing out like Kurt Warner. You can't trade him. Trade Wentz and his bum knee. Well, you're nah, not going to do no that. That guy was on track, Woody, he's to be become the MVP. an MVP. And you can't just give up on a guy like Most that. Most of the scouts will tell you he's the best quarterback in the league right now. Somebody once Before again, he got hurt. Cleveland passed on. Let's go to Jim and Shaler. Hey, Jim, what's up? Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? All right. What's up, man? Hey, if you're asking my two favorite sports guys, uh, I've been hearing rumors uh, the past couple days about, uh, about the Pirates bomb done. And, um, 
is, is it true that he's raising the ticket prices for whenever San Francisco comes out of town? Because uh, I guess I, I've heard that, but I've not seen that anywhere. But I have heard that rumbling. Yes, but go ahead. If, if he if he does that to the fans, uh, that's a shame. I could see him doing it whenever the Yankees or Red Sox come into town. I can't but see it anywhere. It. Yeah, I, I understand that, but he does it anyways. But uh, if he does it because the fans want to come and see McCutcheon play, that's a shame. And uh, I'll let you guys talk about it. Thanks, right. guys. Yeah, I have not heard anything about that, whether it's going to happen. I haven't or not. seen it. I've heard it. People um, talking you know, about people it. People always have the right. They don't have to go to – they don't have to buy the tickets. They don't have to go to the games. We're going out to Newcastle next. We have Lou on the line. What's up, Lou? How are you? Hi, gentlemen. How are you doing tonight? Good, thank you. I just want to say uh, God bless uh, Diaz, that pirate backup mm-hmm. catcher. His mother got kidnapped in Venezuela today. Terrible situation down there politically, and it's, it's now, you know, players don't want to go back there. That's their home country. And even with family members there, that's why a guy like Felipe Rivera wanted to sign a deal so he can – you know, bring guys, his family from there here if he could. Yeah, it's a mess. I mean, we saw that last year. The players were very outspoken about trying to make things better. I think Francisco Cervelli yeah. uh, is from Venezuela. Uh, it's just an awful situation, and, and I hope it works out for the DS kid. Uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's almost a different world that we can't even imagine. It is. Any question for you before we let you go? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's go back to the lines here. We'll get um, John in Green Tree. Hey, hey thanks for taking my call, man. How are you? How are you? What's up, John? What's up, man? Uh, hey, uh, why can't Pitt beat Clemson? Um, I thought that was a good game by Pitt, but uh, why can't we beat Clemson? Because they're, um, they they're not beating anybody they're not right not beating now. Anybody, right, John? Uh, they got to figure it out somehow, some way. Um, they got the two at home against BC and Wake Forest. Wake Forest is a bad team. They got to win. Maybe one of they those can games. get that one. Maybe they can get that. What one. do you think the attendance will be like for one of those oh, games? My goodness. Now they have Virginia Don't coming even to think. the Pete that's, on the 24th. That's I believe. the last game, I believe, right. or the, the next to last. The number two ranked team in the country. Right. They're really good. And who knows? Well, they they're going to be number one after Villanova. Right. Uh, Villanova after Villanova <laughs> loses yesterday. He's now the mascot. Villanova. For Villanova. I, I got I got the Steelers on my mind. Chucky in Burgestown. Hey, Chucky. <laughs> Yeah. Go ahead. I was wondering, do you think it's stupid that they got rid of the offense coordinator first instead of the defense coordinator, knowing the defense really? No, I mean, if you know the history there, I think, uh, you know, Art Rooney told me yesterday when we talked to him that it was a, they needed a change of voice in that room. And for whatever reason, it is what it is. It, you know, this was different than the last time they made a change because it was the Steelers saying, we are going to try to get someone who could help Ben Roethlisberger stay upright and last his career. They did. And they did. And now this is, uh, and for all I know, Ben endorsed this. He really likes Randy Fickner, who was a really good football mind. So, hey, sometimes if that's what the guy who's your franchise wants, then I think you have to listen to him, if that was the case. Yeah, and, and I mean, the guys on defense, I thought I thought that Joey Porter could be in trouble. I don't I think the outside guys have gotten better. Uh, you know, T.J. Watt was okay, but he came in very much ballyhooed. Uh, Bud Dupree, I don't think, had a good year at all and get better. I don't think, obviously, Jarvis Jones is no longer with them. And that's, is that a reflection of him? I think he's got to take some heat for that. I agree. Uh, and then we hear at the end of the year that Tomlin was very involved with the defensive play calling, so he's got to take some blame for it, too. Uh, the defense wasn't very good, isn't very good without Ryan Shazier. They got it. To me, that's their number one need is finding a replacement at inside linebacker. And it's good that Roethlisberger now says he wants to play longer because they don't have to worry about drafting the so-called heir apparent, at least not now because they have other needs they need to take care of. we got to take a break. Sean, Marty, and John, you're coming up next right here live on Pittsburgh CW.